There may have been stronger and more athletic players in his position, but none were as exceptional in all aspects. He possessed not only exceptional power at the point of attack. Dallas three. Falcons first offensive possession. This time he only gets one. But also remarkable agility and speed. Today we get excited when we see Michael Parsons chase down a player. All the way to the end zone. That is right. But Randy White was doing this back in the 70s. Randy White, the often overlooked Cowboys legend, was recognized by many as the first undersized athletic defensive tackle in history. Randall Lee White was born on January 15, 1953 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. White was an amazing athlete in high school. His physical play and natural strength stood out on the basketball team, but it was football that allowed White to revolutionize the entire world of sports in the city of Delaware. I grew up when I was in, uh, in high school, I was a fullback and middle linebacker. Uh, played that all the way through high school. As a fullback and linebacker, he became a legendary football player and is still considered to be the greatest player in the history of Thomas McKean High School. In 1972, Randy White was recruited as a fullback at Maryland University. And when I went to college my freshman year, you could go both ways. Uh, you couldn't, you weren't eligible to play varsity, but you could, I played both ways. I played fullback and uh, defensive end uh, at the University of Maryland. During his sophomore season, Maryland hired Jerry Claiborne as the new head coach who recognized Randy White's potential and work ethic and moved him to defensive end. And then when Coach Claiborne got there, he switched me to uh, the, the end in that wide tackle six uh, defense. So that's where I ended up playing in the defensive line. Claiborne believed White had the skills to become one of the best five linemen in the U.S., and it turned out to be a natural fit. By his senior year, White was as fast as some of the team's fastest wideouts, impressing Coach Claiborne. In that senior year, White achieved great success, winning the Outland Trophy, the Lombardi Award, and the Atlantic Coast Conference Player of the Year. When I came out of the University of Maryland, I won the Outland Trophy, Lombardi Trophy, uh, I bench pressed 450 pounds, I power clean 325 pounds and I ran a 4640. White was drafted by Dallas as part of a group known as the Dirty Dozen. Randy White, defensive end, Maryland. And by the way, the Dirty Dozen, among those, well, the 12 rookies in that draft class who made the team, here, take a listen to some of these names. Randy White was a first round draft pick, number two. The Cowboys also had a second first round draft pick. Number 18 overall from Langston University in Oklahoma, Thomas Hollywood Henderson. Bob Brunig was the third round pick. Pat Donovan in the fourth round, along with Randy Hughes. The Dirty Dozen included 11 drafted rookies and one rookie who was a free agent. <laughs> you were reading off those guys, the Dirty Dozen? Yes. So have you ever heard of that first year, the roommates? No. Do you remember all your roommates? You guys lived together? No, no, it was Burton Lawless, Bob Brunick, and myself. Three of them. Three of us lived together. Now, which part of that do you want me to tell? Me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember uh, our famous quarterback there, uh, Clint Longley, used yeah. to bring rattlesnakes into the locker room. Well, of course, I had to get one, right? And I went and I got this fish tank. And I put the rattlesnake in there, and I used to put little white mice in there. And, it, and the snake, well, he would never eat, right? He'd never eat. And uh, Bob and, and Burton loved me for doing that because none of us slept. I didn't sleep. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool to have that rattlesnake in there. But finally, at the end of the year, I took it back home to Delaware, and I released him in a state park in Delaware, a rattlesnake. Really? Yeah, and then they found some rattlesnakes in Delaware after that. <laughs> this draft class is considered one of the best in NFL history. Dallas actually drafted White as a middle linebacker behind the great Leroy Jordan. White, from the beginning, was loved by fans and teammates. I was one of those guys at Dallas that really felt like he should be a middle linebacker because I had played against Dick Butkus, and Randy White, to me, was the closest thing to Dick Butkus 
that I'd ever seen. But he also had a philosophy that was given to him by another legendary player. We go downstairs and there's Ray Nitschke sitting with Art Donovan and Bobby Lane. And I get to meet these three guys. I mean, this is a big deal, right? And I had just gotten drafted by the Cowboys. They were make me a middle linebacker. And Nisky says, hey, kid, come over here. Sit down. Let me give you a little advice when you go to that Dallas team. He says, don't make any friends. He says, you knock the crap out of everybody you come up against. You'll have all the friends you need. White was too good to leave on the sideline or on special teams. So during his third season after Jordan retired, he was moved to right defensive tackle, the same position Bob Lilly held from 1961 through 1974. Once again, a change in position proved to be important for his career. He had that mean streak in him that, that Dick Buck has had. You know, I was against moving him to tackle, but it became a perfect position for him. He had a breakout season that year, was named to his first All-Pro team and Pro Bowl, and shared the co-MVP of Super Bowl XII honors with his teammate Harvey Martin. Harvey and I were on the sidelines, and Harvey comes up to me and puts his arm around me. He goes, Randy, we're the co-MVPs of the game. You know, it didn't even sink in my mind, you know, that, you know, and, and Harvey, you know, Harvey always liked the cameras and getting the publicity right. and, and a big Harvey grabbed me and he turned me and we're taking all these pictures. And, and the next morning they, they wanted us to go to uh, Good Morning America and be on Good Morning America television show. <laughs> And I, you slept? I, I never opened my door. I told him I'm not going. <laughs> Harvey went. I didn't go. I had a chance to be on national television. And then we went to New York and picked up the uh, the cars. We each got a Thunderbird. Well, I had mine home, and I was, you know, I, my, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. When I drove my car back home, and I'm driving up to see my grandmother up in Pennsylvania, and I hit a deer, and I totaled a whole front end out of that brand new Thunderbird. In 1978. White was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Year. Randy White, also known as the Master, was a menacing force on the field. Unapologetically mean, he made sure you were aware of the consequences of disrespecting him. With his unmatched power and strength, he backed up every bit of it. They were still scrambling for the ball. There's another penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct after the play. Number 54 on the kicking team is accepted. 15 yards, first down. Well, that 54 is Randy White. I, I can't believe he was on the kicking team. He must have come in from the sideline ready for defense. He's one of those guys like you used to tell me about Ted Hendricks. He's fine. He's a good player, all that stuff. But don't get him upset. Then he becomes a great player. Goes to work on first down. Looks deep, has Anderson. Anderson has some room. Shakes free of a couple tackles. Randy White hit him from behind and nailed him down to the ground. I'll tell you, Randy White is fired up, and he's trying to fire himself up, and he's trying to fire up the rest of his teammates. White came from a household who didn't mind correcting you if you got out of line. Uh, which, which team did your mom hate the most? Well... My mom didn't like any of them either, but she got in the most fights in Philadelphia. So that was, a, <laughs> she was a chair, you know, she's a little stocky lady, you know, and she wasn't afraid to express her opinion. So somebody pours a beer on my sister's head. Well, my brother hits him, knocks him between the chairs. Well, my mom, she always carried a blackjack with you her. You guys always. know what blackjacks are? Blackjack. A <laughs> little stick. club. Yeah, you know, she knows, she knows. Stick little, and they little, wind little, tape yeah, on it. And... Yeah, and she, she took the blackjack out, and this old lady, she's straddling this guy, hitting him like this, and the, <laughs> and the police had to come drag her off of him, and they kicked that guy. They said they kicked that guy out of the stadium. Everybody cheered for my mother, so. <laughs> White possessed a remarkable combination of skills. It extended beyond mere strength and power as he diligently studied martial arts under one of Bruce Lee's training partners. It's a funny thing. We were we had a punching bag out there. Bob told me he said uh, hit the hit the bag, and I punched the bag uh, pretty hard. And he says, no, no. He says hit the bag, and I was hit with my left hand, and I'm right-handed. And uh, he said hit as hard as you can. Well, it kind of kind of uh, irritated me, so I well I hit as hard as I could. He told me he said, well you don't know how to hit. I started working on my skills, uh, learning how to. Uh, use my left hand and my right hand uh, as far as my performance uh, when I left the Cowboys I bench pressed over 500 pounds I could power clean over 400 pounds uh, I maintained my speed pretty much uh, over the years 
This training enabled him to analyze and exploit every aspect of his opponent's abilities to his own advantage. They took away the head slap, and the head slap was a great weapon for a defensive lineman because it was very distracting to the, uh, to the offensive lineman. So when they took that away and they allowed the offensive lineman to use their hands and grab and push and come out here, uh, you know, you had to come up with new techniques, had to be developed. And uh, Bob introduced me to some of his uh, the martial arts things he did, and we tried to, and we successfully did, apply it to the football field. He achieved nine consecutive All-Pro and Pro Bowl selections, participated in six NFC Championship games and three Super Bowls, and amassed over 1,100 total tackles, including 701 solo tackles and 111 sacks throughout his 14-year career. Remarkably, in 1978, he even recorded 16 sacks as a smaller size defensive tackle. When compared to other greats, he is ranked as the third highest in defensive tackles and sacks in a career, following Alan Page and John Randall. It is worth noting that Randy White did not begin rushing the quarterback until his third season, while John Randall rushed the quarterback for 14 seasons and Alan Page 16 seasons. White was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1994 and will forever be mentioned as a legend who defied all odds. Until next time, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.